Black, black, million, million. If you're left out of a story that you're actually including, it, it's disempowering. You don't know your history. Um, you can't provide examples of what your ancestors actually did when people tell you that you didn't do nothing. Um, and it's, like I said, it's disempowering. And, and when people find out about this information, they find it empowering, they find it interesting, they find it very stimulating, and they walk out of the room feeling, um, you know, better than when they came in. And also, if they have the argument or discussion with someone who doesn't know their history, they can actually say, well, look, if you don't think there were black people in World War II, well, check out this guy, check out that guy, check out, you know, John Henry Smythe or Errol Barrow, whatever. So when these events take place, you see people literally taking notes, writing things down, they go off and do their own research, and then it really kind of awakens them as to how misinformed mainstream society is and how kind of um, unfair it is as well. So it says here, um, the French army had been defeated, explains director Rashid Boucheret, and most of their former soldiers were in prisoner of war camps or hiding or working in civilian life. So in 1943, the exiled General de Gaulle, by then based in Algiers, which is in Africa, of course, had to build what he referred to as his African army. That's what it says there, right? This army was composed of just 200,000 white Frenchmen alongside 400,000 Algerians and Africans who first entered Europe through Italy and then moved into France. Therefore, the French army that liberated France was not French, it was over 65% African. Mm -hmm. But there's more. So this is an interview from the BBC, um, April the 6th, 2009. Listen to what they say here. The liberation of Paris in August 1944 was a great moment in the long fight against Nazi Germany. But what is not widely known is that in this victory against a racist ideology, British and, British and American commanders deliberately excluded black French soldiers from taking part in the liberation. Papers have come to light which show that colonial troops, mainly from West Africa, formed a large part of the free French forces. But it was a white only force that marched into the city. Mike Thompson has seen the papers for Radio 4's document program. As the threat of war with Germany grew, tens of thousands of troops from France's West African colonies answered the call. By the time the country fell in June 1940, 17,000 of them lay dead, many ruthlessly executed after surrendering to German forces. After capturing us, the Germans treated the Senegalese with unprecedented brutality. They stabbed them with their bayonets and beat them with belt buckles. A little later, we heard rapid salvos from an automatic weapon coming from the direction where they had disappeared. Soon after France's crushing defeat, General de Gaulle called on all the country's soldiers, sailors and airmen to rejoin the fight. Thousands of black colonial troops did just that, and they soon made up the core of the Free French Force. The French 2nd Armoured Division, which until then had many colonial troops in its ranks, led the Allied liberation of Paris on August the 25th, 1944. But strangely, looking through archive footage, I can't see a single black soldier amongst them. Professor Olivier Vivioca, at the École Normale Supérieure de Cachin, knows why. You cannot see black faces because uh, black soldiers were not allowed to participate to the liberation of Paris. The evidence for this can be found in a document from Allied High Command, written by American officer Major General Walter Beadle Smith. Stamped confidential, it reads, It is most desirable that the division mentioned above consist of white personnel, and this would indicate the 2nd Armoured Division, which with only one-fourth native personnel, is the only French division operationally available that could be made 100% white. The American High Command, which segregated its own soldiers along racial lines and didn't allow most black GIs to fight until near the end of the war, clearly wanted the liberation to be seen as a whites-only victory. De Gaulle went along with the idea after assurances that French forces would lead the liberation. But surely Britain, which didn't segregate its soldiers and had a large and highly valued Indian army, must have objected. Not a bit of it. This document was written in January 1944 by British General Frederick Morgan to the Allied Supreme Commander. 
I have told Colonel de Chavin that his chances of getting what he wants will be vastly improved if he can produce a white infantry division. Just two years earlier, concern about the arrival of 100,000 black GIs in Britain led Major General Arnold Bullock Dowler to submit a paper entitled Notes on Relations with Coloured People to the British Cabinet. It included this passage. While there are many coloured men of high mentality and cultural distinction, the generality are of a simple mental outlook. Too much freedom and too wide association with white men tend to make them lose their heads. The British cabinet accepted most of what Dower had to say, and the army later advised its soldiers not to invite black GIs home or back to their barracks. <laughs> After the liberation of Paris, many of France's black colonial soldiers were stripped of their uniforms and sent home. And in 1959, their pensions were cut. The liberation of Paris. In All right, so just to summarize, up to two thirds of the French army was actually African, from Africa itself. They fought all the way to Paris. When they get to Paris now, they're not allowed to march at the front of the parade, they get sent to the back. So when the cameras are rolling, they record the white troops. So if you watch these old documentaries, you see a whole bunch of white guys, you might think it was all white, but that's not true at all. And that was, con that was deliberately conspired in the case with the British and the French and the Americans to actually ignore the black contribution to win the war. So they literally could not win the war about these African troops, but when, the war, when it comes to recording history, it's like, oh, well, we did it all by ourselves, you know, shut up. When you don't get a credit for something you've done, you feel a certain way, right? But not only that, it's like your ancestors wouldn't know that you did what you actually did. So it disempowers, disempowers them as well. And that's deliberate. It's not an accident that all this history is not that well known, you know, or that people refuse to teach it. It's, it's a way of maintaining white supremacy.